This is the On the Pony Express podcast, part of the On3 network. Check out all the SMU coverage you need at ontheponyexpress.com. Now, now. here's your host, Billy Embody. Billy Embody. One, two, three, ready, we go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I'm Billy Embody. Thanks for listening. We've got a lot to get to today. Basketball heavy podcast on recruiting as it is going to be a massive weekend this weekend and next for Andy Enfield and his coaching staff with official visitors hitting campus. So we'll talk about that and we'll talk about it as well with on three national analyst Jamie Shaw will join the show. We'll also talk a little SMU TCU and just kind of resetting things as the Mustangs enter Iron Skillet Week. And before we do that, we got to remind you guys that we are presented by our friends at StatusJet. StatusJet.com, go on their website, look at all the planes that they have available, look at all the options they can look at for you. David Henry and his team with the code PONYUPACC can give you a discount on a round-trip flight. Some big games coming up, Louisville, Duke, many more this season for SMU, and you could start looking ahead to SMU basketball as well. Reach out to them. You might find that your family, your friends, if you want to take coworkers or clients, this might be the way to do it. Travel with that level of luxury that you have always envisioned traveling with and do it with our friends at Status Jet. They're proud supporters of SMU Athletics and the On the Pony Express podcast. So go to statusjet.com today. Use code PONYUPACC for a discount. SMU basketball, we're going to... Talk about that in just a few minutes with Jamie Shaw, but I do want to talk first about Iron Skillet Week. It's here, SMU TCU, 4 o'clock Central on the CW inside Ford Stadium. Two two and one football teams getting together to play this game. And for SMU, it's been a long bye week. It's been a long time for them to stew on that BYU game. And look, you never want to lose games and you never want to lose it the way SMU did playing as poorly as they did offensively, but they're kind of in a, what do you got to lose type type of situation here? You know, Sonny Dykes and TCU fell up at home, dramatic comeback by UCF, but SMU has not looked that good offensively. So what do they have to lose? They need to come out and play fast right from the jump and they need to do it with consistency and clean execution. Execution. UCF this past weekend against uh, TCU showed you can run the football, and you can also run it with your quarterback. Now, Kevin Jennings is not KJ Jefferson. He's not 250-plus pounds. He's not that battering ram. He's got more of a speed element to his game. But SMU's offense with Kevin Jennings at the helm should be more run-focused with Rhett Lashley calling these plays. And however this offense goes – against TCU is probably going to determine if SMU can get this upset done. Uh, The line opened, I believe it was one and a half point favorite to TCU, and that's on the road as well. So the Horn Frogs are coming in as the favorites, which if you're asking me right off the jump, I'm picking TCU this week. I don't know how you can look at what SMU has done offensively so far this season and not pick TCU with what they've been able to do offensively now. TCU's defense has had its moments, and it hasn't looked pristine by any means. New new defensive coordinator Andy Avalos running the show over there in Fort Worth, taking over for Joe Gillespie. But they do have an edge to them. They do have enough of the talent and athleticism that we've seen year in, year out, You know, just covering this game from TCU's side of things. But SMU's defense, on the other hand, they have been playing very well. They have been playing consistent. They've had their moments like any other defense where they've given up a drive. They've given up a score. That happens in today's college football. The days of allowing less than 10 points per game are pretty much over. But with SMU's defense, with where they've gone from the beginning of this year, questions around the cornerback room, could they step up? They've stepped up pretty well so far this year. That front seven, Brendan Lewis, the Nevada quarterback, making them pay on the ground with his legs. All of those things have popped up here and there throughout this season and they've kind of answered the bell you know that second half against Nevada really should have shut them out if not for the kind of phantom phantom spit uh, from Brandon Crosley that was called 
But as they enter this game, as a team, they've got to play their most disciplined football that they have all year. They've got to play the cleanest executed game that they've played all year. And we know that because SMU's offense right now hasn't shown that they can be potent. You know, forget about Houston Christian. Sorry, got to forget about it. BYU game, we've seen SMU be able to move the ball. They haven't finished. They haven't played with that consistency that we've seen other SMU offenses in years past play with that have made them be relatively potent. So Kevin Jennings leads the way, takes over for the starting quarterback job over Preston Stone. And what has to happen now is the next step for Rhett Lashley in this offense. It's finishing in the red zone. It's not fumbling the football. It's not turning the ball over. And quite honestly, this isn't a game that SMU has – they they have a turnover or two, their, their ship is sunk. I think this defense is good enough to make sure that SMU can stay in the game for the most part. But where SMU can't kill itself is in the red zone and missing opportunities on a fourth and, fourth and goal, missing opportunities by fumbling the football. Doing those types of things in the red zone, kicking field goals, that is where it will hurt you. And so for SMU, starting fast is so critical offensively. And my number one thing this week for, for SMU is you've got to run the ball. You've got Brashard Smith. He's a physical back, even though he's not the biggest guy in the world. He's tough. He'll fall forward. He finishes run strong. Set the tone with him. If LJ Johnson is healthy, bring him in. Jalen Knighton coming off a game where he averaged over four yards a carry against a good BYU front. Build momentum in the run game, which we saw when TCU played uh, TCU played USF, where USF was able to run the ball at will, and TCU wasn't able to run the ball much at all. And so there's still that athleticism. There's still that uh, physicality that TCU's offensive line has a tendency to play with at times. And that has hurt SMU in the past. But this, this battle between the run games should go SMU's way. I mean, based on what SMU did against BYU in the run game, you need more of it. You need to help your quarterback out who's making his first start of the 2024 season. You've had two weeks to get him ready. You've had two weeks to get healthy and figure out your offensive line. If you can run the football, which SMU has shown they can do this year, you're going to have a chance against TCU. And if you run the football, maybe it opens up this passing game a little bit more. Maybe it opens up the screen game a little bit more. It opens up deep shots. I don't know. We didn't see much of that with Kevin Jennings at the helm. We saw a lot of l longer intermediate passes, some digs, some things over the middle that he hit. You know, Romello Brinson had one called back. They also really used the short passing and, and kind of dump off game pretty effectively in a sense, which – if dink and dunk is how SMU needs to beat TCU and they need to control the clock, so be it. I mean, I've, I said this on our board, but I think we're seeing a transition this season. And even if Preston Stone would have been at the helm, this is a transition that needed to happen. Right now, the wide receivers, as well as they played in the short to intermediate passing game against BYU, they have shown that they aren't necessarily the ball winners down the field that SMU has had in the past. So whether it be Preston Stone or Kevin Jennings, this short intermediate passing game needed to really be that calling card for this offense along with a strong ground game. And that's where I think if you, if you have these changes and they do take effect with Kevin Jennings, they're going to be able to control the clock and keep TCU off the field. TCU has a, and I watched the UCF game, I've watched it a couple times now, they have a really nice tendency from their perspective to be able to set up things offensively and they build momentum really quickly. You saw how they started against US, uh, UCF and you saw what they were able to do with some of the, the double moves and their ball winners, Jack Besh and Savion Williams down the field. You know, those are guys that are matchup nightmares. And that's something that SMU's corners and safeties will have to be ready for physically. But when it comes to where SMU is at defensively, I think they've shown they can be ready for that. But what they can't be ready for is if SMU's offense is going three and out, really struggling, sets them up in a poor situation when it comes to time of possession. This SMU offense this year might just be built to be more of a 
ground and pound, time of possession, clock chewing offense. And, and that's just, that might be where it's at. And quite honestly, if you really wanted to build off of that a little bit more, you look at the in-helmet communication. And we look at what Nevada did to SMU by really controlling the, the pace of play and slowing it down when they're on offense. And they did that to kind of hurt SMU's in-helmet communication and how they had at least schemed up and thought of the idea of, all right, we're going to have the in-helmet mic. We're going to have signals as well. But here's how we're going to do it. And I think it hurt SMU. And it showed that they showed that at times where they were able to kind of dictate things. Now, SMU's talent eventually took over and they made some adjustments and it worked. TCU has the talent to certainly put that type of pressure on, on SMU. SMU, if they can come out with a game plan that features the ground game and features a commitment to the run, that's been the blueprint to beating TCU in the past. That's what has to happen this week. And it's on Rhett Lashley to do it. You know, th this is not a offense that is going to be sunk, in my opinion, by truly poor play from this 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 group, like I don't think they're they're a group that generally is bad. They've battled inconsistency, and they've at times been teed up by poor play calling. And finding that balance between getting too cute, you know, we know jet sweeps, running into the boundary, all of those things. There's a fourth down play in college football this weekend where. They ran a speed option into the boundary, and I, I, I felt for the fan base immediately. But for, for SMU's offense, going straight ahead in the inside zone, you know, we talked about it with Hayden Howerton last, last, last week. He was talking about some of the outside stretch plays, you know, the pulling of a Logan Parr, things like that hadn't necessarily been really successful for them because this offensive line might just be a little bit better as a straight ahead rushing attack. And I know that sounds basic and defenses can kind of declare, OK, we're going to try to take that away. But that can open up your perimeter game, whether it be screen game, whether it be short passing game, whether it be finding other creative ways to maybe get your running back the ball. That's what SMU needs to commit to is running it up the middle because they can and they've shown that this year. So. We'll talk a lot more about SMU TCU with Hayden Howerton, but of course, it's Skillet Week. I wanted to lead off with that. And I also want to tell you guys that with code PONYUP, you can get on the ponyexpress.com for 50% off your annual subscription. So go over to on the ponyexpress.com today, click join, and use code PONYUP at checkout on an annual subscription. And whether it be recruiting, we had a bunch of intel around where the coaches were this past weekend whether it be basketball, basketball recruiting, or team intel for Iron Skillet Week, get hooked up for the whole rest of the year and into next season with that 50% off. It just makes our subscription just a few bucks a month. So check it out on theponyexpress.com. I want to shift gears a little bit to SMU basketball, and the Mustangs have a big weekend ahead with a couple of official visitors coming in town. They have a big decision coming up on Wednesday. One of their top targets is set to announce his decision. We're going to get into that and much more with On3 National Recruiting Analyst Jamie Shaw, who joins the On the Pony Express podcast. But first, guys, I got to remind you, we are presented by our friends at AKM Turf and Greens. AKM Turf and Greens, reach out to them today. They can completely change your life, whether it be your church, your school. Talk to them about, hey, do we need to do something with an area and use some turf? Guess what? We can get 500 bucks off our project with AKM Turf and Greens when we mention the code Pony Up. That's the way to do it. They revamped McKinney Christian. I'm showing you the video here. And actually later this week, just got sent some fresh video from Alex Carpenter of a brand new project that totally redid a house um, down in the uh, down around uh, Lower Greenville that that was just spectacular. Really cool backyard now. Uh, and for SMU fans, again, Pony Up is the code. Use it to get $500 off your project today. They do spectacular work. They'll help you maintenance it um, and, and, and work on that and make sure it year over year it, it continues to look how it should. So whether it's by your pool, whether it's creating a backyard oasis, reach out to our friends at AKM Turf and Greens today. Use code Pony Up for $500 off your project. Info at AKM turf and greens 
com. And welcome back to the On the Pony Express podcast. We are very happy now to be joined by one of our national analysts at On3, Jamie Shaw. Uh, Jamie, I've followed your work for a long time, even before you got to On3, so it's great to have you on our team. And for college basketball fans that maybe are dipping their toe back into recruiting around SMU's program with the change in coaching staff and the ACC, what's this time of year like for you just tracking it all as official visits start to heat up and, and commitments start to drop? Well, it's been especially unique this year because uh, a lot of the recruitments have been pushed back. Typically by now you'll see a whole bunch of the, the, the players have committed um, or are winding down the recruitments. Now you're seeing the, there's a whole bunch of players who are just kind of right in the middle of their uh, recruiting business and all that type of stuff now. So now that college football started, a lot of the players are trying to get on campus and, and get the feel of the, the, the student body and get the feel of what the atmosphere is like to be on campus with a vibrant campus uh, hustling and bustling. Um, so recruitments have been pushed back, which leads to with the start of the high school season coming, with the start and the anticipation of the college season coming, now to add the recruiting process right in the middle of that on top of things. It's a pretty busy time of year right now um, on the basketball front. And uh, how big is NIL right now in college basketball? Because this past offseason just seems like it, it's exploded in that regard. It's still one of those things where people are trying to get their arms around. I, I think you see the college programs. Uh, you see some of them even going the route of hiring general managers and people who, who specifically um, deal with NIL um, and all that. I, I think it's still something as to where not only the NCAA, but the colleges specifically, as well as the players, are trying to get their entire hands around the grasp as to uh, what exactly is NIL um, at this point in time. And with, with SMU, I mean, they hire Andy Enfield. They bring him over from USC, proven head coach who's been to the tournament a bunch. When you look at their class, they're really finalizing kind of that main board of guys in the high school ranks that they're going after. And we saw one name came off the board, King Grace, this past weekend. But these next two weekends for Andy Enfield and his staff, it really is that time where they can go from having a really – just solid class, getting a couple guys, or they could have one of the best classes in the country. And what's kind of your read, at least from what you've sensed on maybe the, the trail around this SMU program? Well, I, I think for starters, uh, it helps that Texas is really deep in basketball right now. Uh, there's a lot of talented players, uh, you know, in the 25 class, as well as the foreseeable 26, 27, 28. So Texas is really deep uh, within um in the basketball, and then you have the buzz of Andy Enfield coming in. You have the buzz of the ACC coming in. People love new and shiny things. Um, so uh, Enfield's able to sell not only the success that he's had, both at Florida Gulf Coast and at USC, but also the draft picks that he's had. Um, and that continues to carry on. Um, you know, when you get a program like SMU that's in a huge uh, area um, that has athletic success in the past, um, there's a story to tell. There's excitement uh, with what could be. There's excitement with the ACC coming, one of the most storied basketball conferences um, in the country um, historically. Um, so th there's just a whole bunch of new exciting things that are going on with, you know, the fact that they can stay within their home state and get a lot of talented players to possibly take a look. Yeah, speaking of that talent, let's jump into that. SMU is after Jermaine O'Neal. He's got a decision coming on Wednesday, Mustangs versus the Vanderbilt Commodores in this one. And uh, SMU has really prioritized Jermaine O'Neal in a big, big way. Dynamic prep, son of an NBA all-star. Most everyone who follows basketball loosely knows the name Jermaine O'Neal, if, if you're our age at least. Uh, and and it, he is one where, you know, SMU seems like they're sitting in a good spot. Is that still the case in your eyes? Yeah, so I think there's some momentum there. What on um, uh, what SMU's been able to do in the process with Jermaine O'Neal is let him know that he's a priority. Him individually as a player himself, they want Jermaine O'Neal Jr. to play uh, for the Mustangs, and they've done a good job of letting him know that. They've done a good job throughout the process of um, kind of prioritizing him and letting him know that he's a priority. Uh, when it comes to Jermaine's game, um, you know, people that are familiar with his dad, Jr.'s not like his dad. Uh, Jermaine O'Neal Jr. is a wing He's got a, a lot of athleticism that he's coming into, um, and he's continuing to grow a little bit. A year ago at this time, he was about 6'4". Now he's pushing probably 6'6". He's got good length, um, and he's really coming into his strength. He's coming into his uh, his athleticism as well. Uh, he's bursting off of two feet. Um, and his game is one that continues to develop. 
Um, you know, he continues to add each time you see him a little bit of something new to his game each time. And there's a very good long-term prospect uh, with the long-term aspect of what Jermaine O'Neal Jr. could end up being as a player. Yeah, what do you what do you want to see out of him more in that development aspect? Just you know, for his college aspirations, and then maybe the, maybe beyond. Sure, just, just continuing to develop the entirety of his game, uh, getting a little bit tighter off the bounce, able to self create, get to spots uh, in the half court setting off the bounce, tightening up the jump shot, becoming more of a threat as a jump shooter in the half court set. I think those are some next steps that he's taking, as well as you know, um, continuing to add strength to his base and core, so he plays with better balance, plays off the two feet. Um, a little bit more sustainably as well. Um, but just overall tightening of his game um, and becoming more of a threat uh, for multiple levels. And SMU isn't just after Jermaine O'Neal Jr., who does announce on Wednesday. Another guy that does have an announcement date is Jaden Toombs at the end of this month, the top you know, prospect at his position, one of the top big men in America. What are your, what, what, what are your thoughts on him and just overall as a player and, and what he brings on the floor? I think with Toombs, the consistency that he brings is something that's incredibly valuable and appealing. Um, Every time I've watched him play throughout the past couple of years, it seemed that he's been right at a double-double, if not into double-double territory. He's an excellent area rebounder. Uh, He ends possessions very well on the defensive end of the floor. Um, He plays a physical brand of basketball. He's not afraid to mix things up close to the basket. He's got nice touch around the rim. Um, And he's somebody who continues, no matter the setting, to bring that physical aspect of the game um, uh, to the floor. And that has produced um, both in the AAU level, the USA basketball level, making the, uh, uh, the U-17 team this past year that went over and won a gold medal, um, and in high school. Uh, he's continued to uh, show that physicality, and that physicality has led to consistent production uh, amongst his peers, uh, no matter the setting. You know, one of the one of the best prospects in the country, SMU does lead the on three recruiting prediction machine for him. There's there's some buzz about Texas Tech in there. There's there's some other programs that are after him as uh, he looks ahead to that September 25th commitment date. It's right after his official visit this coming weekend to SMU. What are your thoughts on on how this one might end up? I think the interesting aspect there is the relationship that Jaden has with Jermaine O'Neal Sr. and Jr. Um, you know, they've been teammates both in AAU. They've been teammates in uh, high school for a while now. Jermaine O'Neill Jr. has been the coach uh, there. And I think that relationship there could have them possibly being um, a package deal as we look to the next level. Um, there are some schools out there that are recruiting him, the Miamis of the world, um, that are recruiting him individually as well. Um, but I, I think there's a tie there with Jermaine O'Neill Jr. that could be very interesting to continue to watch. And if, if they get, you know, those two right there, I mean, that, put that into perspective just for SMU fans. And it's been kind of a rocky road at times for, for SMU recruiting over the last, however long it's been since Larry Brown was, was, was on campus. What would a start like that with, with two guys in, you know, the top 100 mean? Well, it's two known commodities. Um, but also um, I know it's big in the recruiting world. They put a fence around their backyard. They got the best players from their area to want to come to play for their, their program. Um, when it happens to be that those are, you know, nationally ranked guys, um, there's a lot to be said for, for, for being able to keep the local talent home um, and, and playing, um, staying local, especially when schools from outside of the region came in, made a push and tried to get them um, from other major conferences uh, to keep them, keep players home. I think it, it stamps what Andy Enfield is trying to do in Texas, um, making them a threat uh, moving forward. And when you look outside of the state of Texas, uh, SMU does have another uh, guard who's very familiar with Jermaine O'Neal and Jaden Toombs. They played together a little bit on the circuit. Jerry Easter, one of the top combo guards in America, his recruitment is a very tough one to try and follow and track down, so we won't necessarily get into that. But he is supposed to visit SMU this coming weekend, a massive opportunity for SMU to, again, kind of make them all feel like a group together and things like that. But on the court, what, what do you see from him when, when you watch him play? I think the thing that you walk away with from Jerry Easter is the confidence. Uh, I think there's no denying the confidence that he brings to the court. He's confident with the ball in his hands. He can create opportunities, get downhill. He's got a physical frame uh, listed at six foot four. He's got a strong, uh, lengthy uh, upper body. He's got a, a solid base um, as well. And he just plays with a ton of confidence, no matter the setting whether it's USA Basketball, whether it's AAU on the EYBL circuit, whether it's um, on the EYBL Scholastic circuit in high school, 
uh, Easter Easter um, has the feeling he brings uh, to himself that he thinks he's the best player on the floor, and he goes out and plays, um, you know, with that type of confidence every single time he steps on the court. From Ohio, he does have an official visit to Ohio State, and I believe uh, Miami or, or somewhere else right after that. So it'll be a really interesting recruitment to follow as SMU looks to once again uh, kind of make him feel that love while he's on campus and um, get him on board. So we'll be tracking that one closely with with one of uh, SMU's other top targets that you've you've been all over as far as the the intel goes. Sebastian Williams Adams is uh, out of the Houston area. One of the the top players in the in the state in the country, a top fifty prospect on the on three industry ranking. He's fresh off an official visit to Kansas. He heads to SMU at the end of the month. What are your thoughts there? As as you know, he probably is is you know weighing when his commitment's going to come as well. Yeah, so uh, I guess Sebastian Williams Adams is uh, heading into the Kansas visit. Uh, the Jayhawks built some momentum. Uh, in the recruitment of Williams Adams, um, I know that he's come out previously with a with a, a top four, and he's added a couple of visits to that top four. Um, so uh, I'm not saying it's been a moving target, but uh, you know, a player of Sebastian Williams Adams ilk, uh, the production that he's consistently brought, the the, the archetype, uh, the versatility that he brings as, uh, as a combo forward type of player, um, you know, as things shift and move, schools are going to jump in and, and do all that type of stuff. Uh, there was momentum heading into the Kansas visit with Kansas. Um, you know, we'll see how things progress as he comes off of that visit uh, and, and, and it moves forward. And, and can you speak to him as a player and, and what he's got to do to continue to elevate his game? Sure. Um, right now he's kind of a combo four type of player. One of those guys whose motor might be the best attribute that he brings. Uh, he's got a nose for the basketball um, you know, he comes from a basketball family. His mom played at Wichita State. His granddad played at Wichita State. Um, you know, so, so it's kind of just he's got an innate feel for the game of basketball. He tracks the ball very well. Um, he's able to, to place a physical brand of defense, um, you know, uh, both switching and rebounding and doing all that type of stuff as well. Um, you know, but there's, there's a production factor that he brings. He's consistently able to go in and find points. Even though, even though if you might not have offense that runs through him, he's able to find points, he's able to find rebounds, he's able to find some deflections um, on the court, just understanding where to be um, and having a, a, you know an excellent basketball frame uh, that's projectable moving forward as well. For him, do you have a sense of when he's going to wind things down? I don't. Okay. Well, we'll see. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me how some of these prospects go from committing, signing early to – letting it all play out. And, hey, that's a product probably of the transfer portal as well. Well, and the thing right now, too, is that in this cycle we're seeing that the fluidity within a recruitment can happen from day to day, from, from minute to minute. Um, you know, th th there could be a call right now that, next, that XYZ is planning to commit or that he's shutting it down or that he's adding visits and all that type of stuff. So it's very good to have somebody as on top of things as you are, Billy, uh, within the, the market that you're in to uh, staying on top of it and bring the latest news because – you know, what is news today might be old news tomorrow. Um, so yeah, the fluidity of it this year has been uh, very uh, sneaky. Well, I appreciate that. I'll shoot you that Venmo after we get done. So, <laughs> Guys, follow Jamie Shaw. Jamie's all over it as one of our national recruiting analysts on the basketball side of things. So, Jamie, thanks so much for the time, and we're looking forward to uh, next time chatting maybe later this fall, and we'll be assessing SMU's 2025 Hall of Recruiting under Andy Enfield. Billy, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And guys, make sure that y'all go follow Billy too. He's the best in the market uh, in that SMU market. So stay on top of things. Thanks so much, Jamie. And guys, we'll be right back with more of the On the Pony Express podcast right after this brief break. We had a blast having on three national analysts, Jamie Shaw on, and he did talk a lot about building that little fence around Dallas if SMU can, which is something that Andy Enfield and his staff have shown, you know, they've gone after some top targets in the DFW area. They just saw one King Grace, a four-star point guard out of Waxahachie, commit to Mississippi State over the weekend. He was one of the first guys to visit SMU. And here's the thing. They are after multiple guards in this 2025 class. They are swinging for the fences. We talked about uh, Jerry Easter on the podcast. They're also recruiting, you know, five-star Braden Burry's one of the top overall combo guards 
uh, in America, ranked as uh, really the number one combo guard in the country, according to the on three industry ranking. And it's it's worth noting that, you know, they're swinging for the fences. He's not somebody that, you know, was scheduled to come on a game weekend like a Jermaine O'Neal was originally and, and was uh, going to swing through campus for, for that time. Um, you know, he King Grace had kind of, you know, done his own thing in terms of taking an official visit to SMU during the week. So that's why they're recruiting a guy like Braden Burry's a five star, a top 15 overall prospect in the country. Doesn't mean they'll necessarily get him a big time prospect overall, but, you know, they're swinging for the fences in this in this 2025 class. They get Jermaine O'Neal. They get Jaden Toombs. You're off to such a strong start and we'll see where the rest of that 2025 class goes, you know. Braden Burries is one of those guys who is going to take it all the way into the spring from what it sounds like. Jerry Easter kind of is a little bit quiet on him in terms of when exactly he's going to make decisions. So when you look at what Andy Enfield and his staff have been able to do, they've been a, you know really strong at getting guys on campus. You know, we've reported a lot at OnThePonyExpress.com, another reason why you should subscribe, you know, of official visits. You know, we didn't necessarily hear about them as much under the prior staff. And it, it's not a shot at them. It's just, you know, SMU is building excitement. They're also cognizant of knowing when to share things a little bit. And again, the last app just kind of was a little bit quieter about their business overall. But for SMU basketball, I mean, they've had, I mean, it's been a parade of four stars all summer long. And now into the fall, you're seeing them get their top targets on campus. Uh, we've broken down, you know, a lot of the, the, you know, recruits that are, you know, swinging through in terms of, you know, who's going to come through. We've got much more on recruiting. We're going to do a recruiting only podcast and insider podcast for this week as well. So uh, that you guys on our uh, on three uh, on the Pony Express YouTube premium channel can get that. Uh, but for SMU, they're they're not looking to find guys that are diamonds in the rough for the most part. You know, the only thing that I've talked with sources about is that now that they have 15 scholarships to play with, do they take some freaky athletes that aren't necessarily the biggest recruits and just see if they pan out? And then if not, you know what? They've been developed. They've hopefully had a good experience and they move on somewhere else at a lower level and, you know, go do things or, or, or whatever. But, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how this 2025 class pans out. I've said on the board, I expect at least three guys uh, in this class and I expect them to be four stars. You know, that's the level SMU appears to be recruiting at right now. And they're in that kind of moment where they're going to have that opportunity to really make this splash happen and, and take that next step as a program that this staff has kind of been working towards all summer. And for basketball, these are guys that are going to visit and they're going to check out the program. They're probably not going to pop on that Sunday of them leaving, you know, whatever official visitor it is, probably not necessarily how it's going to work. They're going to either take more visits or they're going to set a commitment day right after and get their video done or get their announcement planned out, all those things. So uh, it'll be, uh, once again, very interesting to see how this recruiting class pans out. And then there's going to be that, you know, kind of line to walk with uh, Enfield and his staff, you know, still looking at the portal a little bit, but they do want to build through the high school ranks. That's where he's kind of made his, you know, money, so to speak, when it comes to coaching college basketball is building teams through the high school ranks. So it's going to be a fun, exciting two weeks uh, in particular with two massive official visit weekends planned for SMU basketball. So be sure to subscribe to on the pony express.com again, code pony up gets you 50% off annual subscriptions for new subscribers. So, Check us out on theponyexpress.com today. One more reminder, go to statusjet.com and use the code PONYUP, ACC, PONYUP ACC, for a discount on a round-trip flight. Plan your travel today for the rest of the season. We'll have much more on the, on the Pony Express podcast as the Battle for the Iron Skillet Week really kicks off and gets into the gear Tuesday morning as we get our first look at the Mustangs since the bye week. We'll have tons of coverage with Hayden Howerton on the podcast. Hoping to get some other guests who cover TCU to give us a little bit of intel on the Horn Frogs. And again, stick to OnThePonyExpress.com. That's where we'll be all week, breaking it all down. Tons of good comp- uh, content there. So hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the On The Pony Express podcast, and we'll catch you guys later this week with another edition.
Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on 3 and on Instagram at on 3 SMU. And keep it locked to OnThePonyExpress.com for more coverage.